killing it on the deal sourcing side yeah. of things. You are a deal sourcing machine. How are you finding these deals? Going to, through estate agents every day. Right move, open rent, literally ring them. You can at least get 136 cars out in a day. 136? 136 dead cars in Dude. a day. Dude. How much money do you make a month? From deal sourcing alone, it's about conservative 6K. And then from the properties, it's about 2,500 or something like that. You're relentless. To be brutally honest with the only person that really believed in me was me mum. She's proper like, yeah, yeah, go on, do it, do it. And everybody else was just like, yeah, you're joining a call. Cool, it's like what do they you think go now though. Now you're making more money than you ever made. They're coming to me now. They want to speak now. Now they can see what's actually going on. What type of deals are people right now this year? What sort of deals are people mostly looking at? What would you say? Dwight Faulkner, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you very much, brother. So you got Manchester Premier Accommodation, yep. which is an accommodation company. Yeah. And you're also packaging and selling deals. Yeah. Financially free. Yeah. How old are you? Uh, 35, I have to think then, bro. 35 years yeah. old, based in Manchester. Yeah. Well, respect, my brother. Thank you very much. I'm going to be hopefully picking your brain and gathering all the information so people can replicate at home and learn what you're doing. But tell me, what were you doing like a year or two ago when we first met? I was doing swimming pools. Oh, so I used to own my own swimming pool business. I was in that industry for 22 years and it was it was good, but then I come across yourself, to be fair. Yeah. yeah. That's what happened. And you thought it'd be more fun? Mate, it's well better. I was dressed in dirty clothes all the time. My knees was aching. My back was aching. Yeah. It wasn't a life, to be fair, mate. And I got numerous people in the industry that have like back replacements, knee replacements, all that Why? kind of Why? What were you doing? Lifting stuff? No, it was like physical labor. So it's like physically building swim pools for people, maintaining them, absolutely everything. It was okay. really labor intensive. I can imagine, fair. yeah. Like really labor intensive. Yeah. yeah. So, so how did you come across property and myself? I come and across you and you uh, built them six houses. And I forget where it was. But Lincoln. Built, yeah, you built the six houses. Then I dropped off and went kind of back on the swim pool industry. I went hard into that, doing business again in that industry. And then I come across yourself again when you bought Amanda, that black Range Rover. And that really inspired me that like, I want to be able to do that. Like, yeah. seriously. I remember that. That was only a year, about a year ago. Yeah, that's what I mean. The Academy was a year. No, I bought, I bought a two, didn't I? I bought a black and a gold one. You and said, was, which one would which you rather? Yeah, <laughs> that well, was Whichever one. one you don't want, I'll take the other. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, that's awesome. Bro. And it's good that you were inspired by that because I personally think, Dwight, the first step to being successful is being able to be inspired and ha uh, celebrate other people's success. See, if I see people on YouTube hating on me, I know that they're not very successful because why would you hate on someone making money if you were making money yourself, yeah. you wouldn't. You'd, you'd be like, yeah, man, respect, cool club. We're in the cool club. If you're hating on someone being successful, you're probably not very successful yourself. If you're clapping someone successful, then you're probably going to be the next one to be successful. So now you've become super successful. Um, talk to me about how you got started. What was the first deal? And how did you come up with that strategy? And what happened? Uh, basically, the first deal was um, service accommodation, rent to service accommodation. It took me a fair while, to be fair. Um, it took me like um, four months to get into property. That's what I was doing. Didn't earn nothing in the first four months because I wasn't using me academy, to be brutally honest with you. Using all the people that I was doing it, I was trying to like an introvert, so to speak. But that's. But I must say, though, the first three months should be about learning. That's because, what it was. Right. It, it has to be. So some people feel kick themselves because they're like, oh, man, I've been training now for like three weeks and I'm not making any money. And it's like, well, people go to university for five years. <laughs> They're not expecting to make money at uni. They're learning, 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 learning. And at the end of university, then they go get a job, right? Whereas when you're training in property, yeah, you want to be making money reasonably quickly. But if you're brand new to it and your background is making swimming pools, probably makes sense to spend a couple months immersing yourself in the learning of it. Uh, and maybe even being an introvert, listening, learning, thinking, and then, and then, but now. I mean, I'm an extrovert, bro. That's yeah. massive off me mental, like 100%. It's changed. All the stuff that we got taught is amazing. If we didn't have that, to be fair, I fully owe my hands up. I would have never got me rent to rent and doing what I'm doing today. How many rent to rents do you have now? Two, one a seven bed and one a three bed. And I'm currently got meetings in next week for one of the landlords that we work really closely with. And he's got numerous really high standard properties in Manchester. Right. So you've got a couple rent to rents making a bit of money. Yeah. But you're killing it on the deal sourcing side yeah. of things. 
You are a deal sourcing machine. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Um, are you operating all over the country or just no, in Manchester? just Manchester. Concentrate your patch, mate. And I'm yeah. doing that and really zoning in. I'm going to dominate Manchester and then I'm going to start doing nationwide eventually. But it's how about. many? How much money do you make a month from your property business right now? I would say uh, from deal sourcing alone, it's about conservative 6K. And then from the um, properties, it's about... 2,500 or something right. like that. So you've got a full-time income coming from your passive income from your rent to rent, which is basically financial freedom. But then your active income is packaging and selling deals, which is another six grand a month on top. Is that more than you was making in the swimming pool business? <laughs> Massively. Just with the deal selling alone. Really? Literally. Just with the deal selling alone. Really? Literally. Damn. Honestly. It's business then, isn't it? If you're having to literally break your back for like... Well, I, I'd say that I, I've done um, 2023, I joined the academy and I've done eight, uh, six months of that year and I've done £81,000 profit from the swimming pool industry. And I thought that was really good. But then I just had this drive in me to do something way better. And I actually found it because uh, mm. I didn't know to before that I was a people's person. I literally didn't know that. I was working in little dingy plant rooms on my own. Yeah. And then now I come to networking events. It's like amazing. Do you know what's interesting? I don't know if you've heard me say this before, but... Um, if you've got a house plant and it's not blossoming, you don't blame the plant. You just change the environment. If you've got a flower and it's not blossoming in the house, you just put it in the sunlight, you water it, and now it blossoms. And in the same way, if you've got a person that's not producing the fruit and the success and the financial rewards that they should be, it's not normally the person's fault. It's not they're stupid. It's not they're lazy. It's that they're just in the wrong environment. So with you... When you were doing your swimming pool stuff, you had all the capabilities to be super successful, but you were in the wrong environment with the wrong people, put you in a different environment around successful investors and and now bang. I think that's what's happened with you. Massively, mate. Like hugely. Honestly. Yeah. Was... So talk me through the process of selling deals. How do you find investors? Uh, find investors basically from the academy and also using uh, LinkedIn and then also using um, Instagram. They're my main sources of getting in, um, investors. Right. Finding me deals. I go through um, estate agents mainly and I'm heavily going into direct to vendor. The reason why I go to estate agents, me, because I think it's a rhetorical door. They're going to have deals coming in and out of that estate agent. And it's been very proven with them because some of the estate agents were so like upwards of six deals through one estate really? agent. Honestly. Yeah, and they just keep passing you stuff. Yeah, mate. Honestly, they've asked me like three or four times, three different estate agents to go into business with them. But you know yourself, it's probably not good going in with a... I've got my file lit and they've not got their file lit. So it's not it's not going to work, is it? Do you yeah. know what I mean? What do they want to do then? What kind of business? Uh, they've got... Um, in October, we've got 289 apartments coming up in Manchester and we want to take them on ourselves. That's what he's saying. But I think I would rather sell them off individually. I've got people lined up for them as well. Yeah. There's numerous things coming up, what he's yeah. actually bringing. And he's got uh, another 50 properties coming up as well, all houses in the Manchester area, and that's wow. what. Yeah, but he wants to get in on it now, because he sees it, I pay him a state agency fee, mate. So I pay him 500 pound per deal, and he absolutely loves that. He actively rings me per week. We was on the phone last night at half nine, discussing all this, what we're talking about now. Like yeah. literally, it was unbelievable to be what, fair. Give me some networking tips then, Dwight. Like how are you, because generally with investors, before you start selling, you need to build your list, you need to build relationships, network with people. What, what are you saying to people? If you're at an event or an academy dinner or chat with someone on social media or whatever, what are you actually saying to them to get them hot, ready to buy on your list? Basically, I'd start with speaking to them first on a personal level. So just speak to them and see what they're doing and everything like that, rather than go and jump in. I've got deals all over. Do you want to buy this? I think it's better building a relationship with them first and then obviously seeing what they're looking for and then say, if if I was to bring up a deal next week, would it be worth me bringing it to you or would, it, would you be able to move on it? That was so like, if would close right there. <laughs> Mate, but that's I'll nice. Move, yeah, yeah that's, that's absolutely perfect. So if I was to find a deal... Would it be worth me bringing it? You know, what are you saying? And if, if they're saying, oh, well, I'm not sure, blah, 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 then you think, well, if they can't even commit to having a conversation if I've got a deal, Yeah. then they're not ready. And if they say, yeah, if you've got a deal, yeah, definitely we could have a chat. Okay, cool. Stage one. <laughs> Next. So, 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 all right. You've spoke to a few people. They've said, yeah, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, someone says to you, I'm looking for a HMO or a, a BRR or a flip opportunity or rent to rent uh, in Manchester. 
Are you then taking money off them up front or are you going and sourcing it and then bringing it to them? It depends. If I take them on bespoke, I'd normally take like a thousand pound deposit. So I know that they're serious and they're not going to waste my time. And then after that, I'll go out there and find the property. But I do have stock in what the, my bespoke clients don't want. So that's something that I go to the investors that I've got on my investors list and I send it out to them and see if they're interested. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think um, is the ki- biggest sales tip then? So... What's the, what's the, how, how are you actually getting people to give you money up front on a bespoke basis and trust you? What be you a likable person. Be a likable person. Like, be a, like an extrovert. Again, to be fair, you, you need to be coming across really nice. And I don't know, dress well is another thing as well. Just, just be nice, be dressed well. And I think that is the key to it all, mate. Mm. You can build relationships with numerous people. And I've got people now that are actually return customers now. So they're actually coming back for deal after deal after deal because they're that happy. And that's how it all is. Yeah, It's all about being a people's person. Yeah. And then I guess if they're coming back again and again, it, it's obvious that you delivered on on the deal. Well, the I, good. aftercare and all that kind of stuff, mate, I 100% I'm there all the way through it, regardless. I used to be an ex-builder, so I can do numerous things. I'd be more than happy to help anyone out in any journey. What type of deals are people right now in um, in, in, in this year? What sort of deals are people mostly looking at? What would you say? Rent to rent and BRR. Massively. And BRR. 100%. Yeah. I think BRR has only just started to come in now. I've got more in people saying, have you got any BRRs rather than rent to rents? I've been heavily working on rent to rents. Right. Like really. Do you think that's in. because buy to let is a bit of a tough market <laughs> because interest rates are high. It's just not that profitable. Whereas rent to rent, low startup, BRR, recycling your cash. That's why they're happy to pay you a fee. Yeah. If they want to buy to let, they could just find it themselves if they're happy with super low returns. But BRR, if it's done right, is an infinite return, isn't it? Yeah. Rent to rent, low startup entry. Are you qualifying them properly? What happens if someone wants to rent to rent, but they don't have a company, they don't know what's what? That's the first thing that we'll ask. So we'll make sure that they've got a company that's up and running. We'll yeah. obviously make sure that they're ready to move on it and then ask them if they've got any knowledge on it. Because some investors that come to you, they, they haven't got the knowledge. So that's where it's hand-holding through the situation. Mm. So obviously I've got a couple that I've done myself and done all the staging, uplisting, everything like that, putting it on the OTA. So that's something that- Do you turn I'll- people down though? Because I imagine it'll be, if you've got someone that, s- s- some some investors almost think like they're buying- a passive income stream, <laughs> you know, they, they don't get that they're buying an investment property or they're buying a business opportunity. Yeah. And if they've got no knowledge of how it all works and their expectations are all over the place, have you ever had to turn anybody down or yeah. say, look, I don't think this is right? Yeah. One. Yeah. One person, but like, yeah, I suppose get comfortable being uncomfortable. That's your words, mate. And uh, that's what it was, to be fair. Just go and speak to him in the nicest possible way and just say, look, I don't think this deal would work for you. If there's anything else that comes up, I'll be more than happy to send it over because now I've got kind of criteria is what you are looking for mm-hmm. and then obviously go from there. So you're selling about two deals a month then? At the minute, two deals a month, yeah. Which is bringing you in about six grand. Some of it, to be fair, some of it's cold source. Right. So we use uh, other cold sources like uh, well-renowned Academy members and obviously we do business together. So it varies, to be fair, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how much time does do you spend managing your your rent to rent? I know you've only got a small portfolio. But uh, still. No, I've, um, the first one in Bolton, I manage that the self with me JV partner. We split up on that and do all that, and then the second one's completely systemized with um, a very well known um, management company from Jersey and his. The oh, dogs. <laughs> I think I know who you're talking about. <laughs> Mate, is the honestly. Are they? Yeah, like seriously. Yeah. Like 100%, percent mate. Like Because it's, it's so funny because they joined the academy from Jersey and they said, we don't know how we're going to manage everything from Jersey. And now they're literally running a management company because they've just system- they've systemized the heck out of it. Well, that's what I mean, mate. And the amount of people that there is to choose from, I, I've seen what they're doing and the amount of people that they're on the academy, it's like, it's doing 100%. <laughs> it's yeah. like, well, I want a bit of this. And Where is that property? It's in Manchester, M14. Right. Yeah. In Man- Do you think Manchester's a really good area? 100%. It's like a mini London. It's up and coming. 100%. Yeah. The, co- the massive, it's building out constantly all the time. In the past 10 years, if you look at picture from what it used to be to now, it's expanded unbelievably. And rents are going up and up and up in Manchester. Just like London. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people don't believe it, to be fair, when you get like an investor from down in London. And like, oh, well, is that, is that right? Though? And it's like, yeah. <laughs> How does the average person then that's working in a regular job or they've got a business, 
haven't got loads of did you have a lot of big money to start with i did do but um i went in hard on training because uh yeah. i can remember you saying oh yeah go and get a load of mental so i went rich dad poor dad 10x but then it was just too many people i was i was like he had all the American slang, so to speak, and then we had you. So then I ended up shutting them down and just coming solely with you because it was it was information overload. Yeah. Like, seriously, information overload. I mean, I think when I say read a lot of books, listen to lots of different mentors, I, I guess from a personal development perspective, like Grant Cardone, oh, Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I'm just reading Fake at the moment. I don't know if you read that one. No. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, Jim Rohn, he's yeah. passed away now, but his stuff, I think that is incredible. But from a nitty gritty, how do I actually find deals? What do I do? You kind of need someone. Training, you need training. Yeah, that's doing it in your country. I, and- I try. I thought I tried doing it from the YouTube videos. Literally, I was like, oh, I'll be able to do it. I've heard of people when I went to one pound courses and they've managed to do it. It's like, it's very possible. But then I got the training and then it was like, the mentors was good. That was my, literally, I used to have a mentor call in the morning. Literally, this was when nothing was going on and it used to literally inspire me for the day and literally crack on it. It was unbelievable to be yeah. fair. Like literally, just get the training, do a few books, like literally, it sort your mindset out more than anything. Yeah. Because I know where my mind was broke in the... Was it? In, yeah, in the swim pool industry. It was like, oh, just working. I didn't feel like... It's like, is this really it? Is this what we're meant to do? Just work. I was actually in Scotland all the time, so I was staying up there at the weekends. It was just like, this is not it. Then I come into this. I work seven days a week now, but I actually love it. I, what I were really some of the books it. that you read then that helped shift your matter? <laughs> Loads. Um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, The oh, Midas my. Touch. Um, Why We Want You To Be Rich by Robert Taki, Kawasaki and Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These new warrior mindset. Um, these... Um, Oh my Who God. wrote the Midas Touch? I've not heard of that one. Midas Touch? Yeah. It's by uh, Robert Kawasaki and Donald it? Trump. Yeah. I've not read that one. Yeah, mate. Honestly, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I man. really love that, mate. Oh, check that I'm an audio out. book, me as well. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. literally. Well, I like to just, like, my car is a, basically a mini university. <laughs> when I'm driving, I'm just listening to audio books, going out for a run, listening to audio books, um, learning constantly. Because I think mindset is important. Because if you've got a loser's mentality, then you're not going to win. You're just not. You've got, to, you've got to be a positive person. You've got to be up, but you've got to believe you can do it. You've got to be prepared to p- p- uh, take risks. Like even you joining the academy, it's a big risk. Yeah. And the reason people don't do it is because they think, oh, th- basically they're not prepared to bet on themselves and they're not prepared to go fully in. They want to just try a little bit and scratch the surface and watch a few YouTube videos. But unless, you, unless you're prepared to go, you know what? I'm going to go all in. It's not really going to happen. So that's what you did. Was it scary? Very scary. You had all my family saying, oh, yeah, you're joining a cult. Have you all cut your hand and shook hands and everything like that? That's what it was saying. But... We keep that bit secret, though, don't we? we don't... <laughs> <laughs> like, literally, but it was like, I don't know, there's that many people. To, to be brutally honest with the only person I really believed in, remember, was my mum. She's proper like, yeah, yeah, go on, do it, do it. And everybody else was just like... Yeah, you're joining a cult. It's like you're going, um, just all sorts of weird things, to be fair. What do they think now, though? Now you're making more money than you've ever They're made. coming to me now. They want to speak now. Now they can see what's actually going on. Because obviously good. I'm active on my social media. So they've seen it from that side. And now they're all trying to turn. I was all right. So where did you get your training with an F thing like oh, that? Oh, that's good. That's <laughs> well, good. that's what I mean. But it's, it's, it, you've, got to, you've got to remember that when people are trying to put you off, they're usually doing it from a position of love and protection. Generally. My uncle said to me, it was like, it was like, a, oh yeah, you can be the hamster and um, you go on the wheel and see what happens. And I said to him, well, the hamster survived, brother. Like the hamster yeah. survived, like seriously. Yeah. But that's what it's like though. Like what you said, not betting on yourself, literally bet on yourself and you will 100% do it with the right mindset. So the estate agents then, they're all wanting to work with you. They're passing you deals. How do you find a deal? Let's, let's say you say a lot of people are looking for bar refurbishment finance. What is a bar refurbishment finance? What is it? Basically, you buy the property, then you refurbish it and then you rent it out. That's basically in a nutshell rather than going yeah. in the nitty gritty. Yeah? So you buy it cheap because it's run down yeah you then do it up nice you then rent it out but now you've also not only benefited from the rent you've increased the value so you can now get a mortgage on it and pull your initial money out yeah which means you're getting an infinite return with a high financial iq but you've got to be able to find those deals. So how, how are you finding these deals? Going to, through estate agents every day. So I can literally sit in Costa Coffee 
and um, ring up uh, through right move, open rent, all that stuff. Literally ring them. You can at least get 136 calls out in a day. I know that. I've done it. 136? Myself. 136 day calls Dude. in a day. And then after that. You're relentless. Me, honestly. I'm like, there's people obsessed and there's me, I like to say. Like, literally. That is a lot of calls. <laughs> Mate, honestly. How many conversations do you reckon you'd have there? Because if you did 136 dials, there's going to be a lot that don't answer, right? There's a lot that don't answer. And then around dinner time, I don't know if you noticed, but um, dinner time, they just seem to shut off for dinner time. So that little break there, you got to be in, in aware of. And obviously just keep on going. But some of the conversations just could be like, no, we don't do company like that. Boof. Uh, obviously that's rent to rent, but BRR, it's a lot easier to but, get. But BRR as well, like, you know, if you, you might call a few agents and they might say, oh, join the queue or, <laughs> oh, everyone's looking for those. Fine. But then you speak to someone suddenly and they go, oh, we've actually got something that could be perfect for you. And then, it, 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 but again, if your mentality is, I'm not going to find a deal. When you get a no or a rejection, you'll be like, I knew it. And then you'll quit. Whereas if you're like, well, I'm just going to just put the work in anyway, regardless. And you do 136 calls in a day, you're going to get results because you might get a few no's, but ultimately you're going to get a yes. And if you're just getting one or two yeses a week, that's one or two deals a week. That's huge. So that's epic. To be honest, it got a little better as well. So at the start, it was like 136 calls. It was like, ooh, it gets scary and all that. But then now you, you pick up the phone, you can have a few phone calls because you got a couple of rent to rent. Say, yeah, I've actually forgot these. I'd be more than happy to give you some recommendations and stuff like that. And it's yeah. like, it makes them well more interested. It is. And same with BRRs. Once you've got a few BRRs, then the agents start calling you. Yeah, that's what's happening We've got now. another one off market. I know you're <laughs> serious because you bought the last one. Yeah. Yeah. It's unbelievable. What's um, been the biggest learning curves over the last year then? Procrastination. Stay away from it. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, I'm not going to uh, say that it was all been sunshine and rainbows. It's like, there's a lot of procrastination in it, to be fair. Right. But it's about picking yourself up. Keep like what you say when you're going out, reading your books. As long as you're doing all that, you do get a little bit here and there, don't you? Like it's... It's the human brain, I would say. You just what? What would you say procrastination is, and why does it happen? Procrastination is when you sat there, when you saw so you do a full day on the calls, you get a whole lot of nothing, like no leads have been brought in. It's just like that's where I think procrastination comes in. It's like, oh, I can't do it, and then mm. you, you then you read books, or you could go on Instagram and watch a little <laughs> reel of Jim Ron or something like that, and it just completely picks you back up. That's yeah. I think procrastination, the root cause of procrastination, is pessimism. Because I think if you're putting something off, it's because you don't want to waste time on it when it might not result to something. If you knew that if you walked into that estate agency, you'd get a deal that would make you a grand a month, you'd run into that estate agency. But the thought of, oh, I might do it and not get to something makes you put it off and you procrastinate. So the key to defeat procrastination is to be an optimist and to say, you know what? I'm going to get a deal. I just know it. And then if you don't go, all right, I'm going to get one next time. And if you're positive, you want to just manifest that positivity into your life. Um, but no, you've done super well, mate. I'm I'm really pleased that, you, you know, you, you've killed it on the rent to rent, on the deal sourcing, BRRs. Um, what would be your final words of advice then for someone watching this that's maybe working in a job they hate in the, a wrong environment, wanting to follow in your footsteps? What's the steps? Get the training. Get the training. That is literally it. Training, books, mindset. Nothing more. If as long as you got that, and literally my motto in the morning is like, um, today's gonna be a good day. Why? Because I said so. Literally, stupid yeah. things like that helps like massively. But yeah. that is mine in a nutshell, brother. How was the crash course when you came down to the crash course? <laughs> Epic. You saw me soon first time I got there. Literally, well, I got was there. After watching your videos, went on the one pound course, right at the end of it, fully signed up, fully signed up. Yeah. Loved it. Like 100%. Well, bro, really proud of you, man. Thank you very much. And if you're listening to this and you want to get the training, you want to get the right mindset, you want to be in the right environment, then I'd love to meet you at the Property Investors Crash Course. Tickets are one pound. I'll leave a link in the description. Get booked now, limited spaces, and I'll see you there in person.